the Caltech Association is a group of people who believe that the culture is the way for humanity to be actually developed in the future. The idea of uh, an event was to put together people from high-end culture, from cultural institutions and uh, a tech nerds, so to say, those who really hands-on create new reality, which from public media we here to uh, represent a threat. So we wanted to hear from the first hands uh, what's the opinion, professional opinion, which uh, should come from culture, be it uh, cultural managers or be it creatives themselves. So that was very important to hear the voice of a beneficiary or theoretically the, the one who could lose the future. So there is a huge gap between the way a musician thinks about what they do and the way an artificial intelligence scientist thinks about what they do. It is right that there are sometimes not many interfaces between the artists and the researcher. And so this is a really nice platform right now here to have a space to interact and to, to find ways, because it's not easy to meet also. Uh, I think the event really managed to bring together people from contemporary arts, from people who work in entertainment, but of course also people who work in education, who work in creative industries. We're interested in finding responses from musicians and other stakeholders in the cultural world about recent work that's been done in music and sound and artificial intelligence. And then we're going to discuss the need for what we are calling a competence centre to facilitate interaction between AI developers, musicians and cultural institutions for the common good. Yeah, so yeah, I experienced um, already a lot that there, in, in academic research, um, often the, the research ends with a publication of a paper and then the technology is in a very in, in um, non very elaborate state yeah? and uh, you, musicians are often not technicians so they have not really access to this technology. I'm interested in artificial intelligence and music and have been since the 1980s. I've been working since 1989 in this area um, trying to understand human musicality through AI techniques and tools, and also trying to enable human musical behavior, human musical progress by means of artificial intelligence. We all love music. It makes us tap our feet. It tickles our brains in interesting ways. But we are not computers, and we have designed computers to be energy efficient. There isn't a place in a computer where feelings can happen. But we talk about computers as though they have feelings all the time. That is misleading. With all these things, one important question that we have to see is not just how far can machines and digital systems be creative, but how far are we as people, as listeners, as audience, are willing and able to appreciate. We have Stefan Lattner here who will tell what they are doing right now. It's not just the next step of digitalization, it's really a new way of uh, working with technology. It's this change from automatization to autonomization that I think is the best way to describe this paradigm shift. It, it's very useful if you have technicians that have some musical education, but it's also very useful to have uh, musicians that have actually really interest in new technologies. So I think that there should be uh, people involved that actually can bridge the gap um, between the two extremes of really application, creative um, application and uh, creating this technology. We will see a live demo now of, of, of Pia. So um, last week I used Pia to recompose two well-known classical pieces and uh, Curtis was so um, nice to actually study those pieces now within a few days and also tra transcribe them actually in order to be able to perform them um, today for us. For me, there is a huge part about the body language and the personality a person can bring on stage, not only just the sound, but also the image and from the visual side. And now I just can see there's a chance that this concert experience will be replaced by AI in the short time or in short term. One small, small notice when this wonderful interpretation of the Chopin Nocturne, when it was these little interruptions uh, of uh, Pia, you remember this, places 
I tried to, not technically, but more spiritually, to focus to the problems uh, of the machine. The problems of the machine is that it doesn't ever been sick of tuberculosis. And that's essential, as Chopin has been. Bosoni said, Ferruccio Bosoni, was a pianist said and composer said, as pianists, 90% of your time is just to do something on an automatic level. So is that you can have this 10% freedom and to, to create the moment of concert as a free person. String quartets are very important for us because there is not the verbal, the symbolic component of the negotiation of a group. So music is the only and uh, another important aspect that uh, in a music ensemble, people can talk uh, together, playing together. In music, uh, playing together, moving together is something that uh, can help to understand and to have the same goal, that is to engage an audience to achieve and to become a unique organism. You see the, these uh, yellow lines are the direction of the heads. So how the musicians look at each other. And uh, can we, one research question was, can we measure how much the group is uh, a, a single organism? How much is in, in empathy, very roughly speaking? I'm a composer based in Cologne and I'm working in the field of contemporary music but also on the interface to electronics and to 3D audio, to augmented reality applications because I'm also uh, directing. So I came actually to work with technology from quite the beginning on because I understand technology always as a kind of extension of, the, of our uh, sound worlds that are um, surrounding us, but at the same time, I always try to make the technology to let to let it disappear somehow, that it is not really visible because I don't want art that is showing a technology. I really want the technology to be part of an artistic piece. Yes, sometimes it happened that, of course, uh, there is a fear that technology, like it always was, but uh, I think the more you go really deep into the technology and you work with the people and the musicians, uh, you can also find ways that they can show what they can, and of course the role changes. And so it's like, I'm Italian, so I go straight to the cliché of food. Uh, and uh, uh, I remember my grandma when she was telling me how to cook a risotto. And uh, there was never a real rule. So, like, at a certain point she said, and then you throw a little bit of salt, and uh, how much? And she said, <laughs> you know, and, and somehow the risotto of my grandma, we will never arrive at that level. And I found very interesting that the creators, the musicians that were in the room, they were talking almost about the need for a space for improvisation, an open space where the real creativity could happen in the interaction with the audience. And I think they emphasize this kind of experiential space between the performer and the audience. But uh, a completely different aspect is the role, potential role of AI in the reception, in the perception of music. So could AI possibly also do something for the listener? Can we like improve, improve the, the enjoyment, the understanding, the intelligence, the well-being, whatever of the listener? And uh, that's certainly an area where AI uh, can, I think can also play a very, very, very big role. For this project, um, our final output vision was to have this um, music together with this microscope, uh, micro landscape of the uh, microorganisms. So um, I, in the end, we ended up choosing a species called Aspergillus oryza, which is in the picture right now, because we wanted a, a complex three-dimensional um, structure for the visualization, visual effect. And based on this species, we tried to create a more a stable way of always being able to cultivate patterns, biological patterns that can be used by AI. And um, for this, today's uh, music that you are going to hear uses um, eight um, synthesis patterns. And the project raises very interesting questions about the future of creative collaboration, including the interaction between humans, machines, and nature, and then the origin of creativity, including music, um, 
and the ownership of intellectual property and artworks created through the non-human interaction. I'm particularly excited about this because we can use AI to empower tuning systems and cultures outside of what I like to call the cultural majority, which is Western music. So technology is not neutral. And it's very important that when we're designing tools, such as music AI tools for creative purposes, that we think about ways to ensure that the technology can be used across a wide variety of different cultures. Maybe there is a need for more investment in this space, bigger collaborations between large cultural institutions like the Salzburg Festival, technologists like Ars Electronica that already experimented many years, and real musicians, real artists, real creators. Every material of the world, even a stone, is a machine. We just need to know how it works and how we use that to our compositions. So, you see, technology, it's a tool for the mankind. But the question I want to put in the table it is, what is the goal? Evolution, and what's the goal of evolution? Beauty, what is beauty? I mean, what is the goal of... In fact, what is the goal of making music in a world like this? It's got, it becomes more fundamental, the question. So, for understanding artificial intelligence, for me, essential is to know what it is intelligence. And what it is an intelligent world. What means an intelligent When we failed in everything in this world, what is intelligence? I have been mentioning the piano, right? The piano was invented three, four hundred years ago, and it became an instrument of choice only after it was adopted by Bach, and Bach made something useful out of it. He created uh, the Bach tonal scale, he created all that. And only after Bach, the piano became the instrument of predilections of musicians. And I think what we need is something similar. So we don't have to be fixated with the idea of, with the idea of artificial intelligence as we define it now, but look at techniques and technologies in a broader sense. And actually, so what I was thinking is, if machines can overcome shame, can humans do the same? Well, when we look at these controversies that we're, we are coming up in this discussion, of course, we don't have to see this as, you know, uh, musicians or the artists being afraid or scared. I think we much more have to look at that they really have something very important to defend. Yeah. And they are defending it not only for themselves. I mean, what they possess, so to say, is access and working with some of the most important values of us as humans and the society, which is about empathy, which is about emotion, which is about you know, the values of humanity. It's not very much use if technologists design technology for people who don't wish to use it. Yeah, we need to know what people want and how they want to use it. So that's the first thing. As regards a competence center, which I think is our main focus today, it seems to me that what is necessary is a crossroads at which intellectual fields, be they practical, applied or whatever, intellectual fields can meet and exchange ideas in a meaningful and effective way. We have uh, got to know new instrument makers based on artificial intelligence. Uh, we have um, got to know um, new performance practices in a, in a very interesting, in a very interesting um, way, uh, perhaps new approaches to creativity. And so the most important thing, is, thing will be how such a research center could cover these very different approaches to music uh, and, and, and AI. And I think what such a center could put forward is the idea of some sort of um, lighthouse project so, or lighthouse performance or whatever you want to call it where um, engineers, musicians, um, even the audiences use AI in order to create a holistic performance that is not only music that is bringing together narratives. I think uh, a kind of circle of maybe five, seven or international places with a strong collaboration uh, it's a better idea to, as to have one. We are not imagining that we are the uh, new kid on the block who invented the, the bicycles. Uh, everything is already there. What we think uh, our uh, think tank and do tank 
to the address is establishing kind of strategic approach and engaging different stakeholders in different period and uh, in different settings. It could be educational programs, it could be uh, learning by doing, it could be research uh, projects. So uh, task is to create strategic uh, course on the way of learning how technology could become super productive for the purpose of a high culture.